because it's, it's only those who've been through hell who lead others out of hell. You know, so I have I have a girlfriend, Dora. Dora Sherry lives in Ohio. She did, she just wrote a book. I I have to look up what the name of it was because I mentioned it the other day in her also. But well, she lost a child, her only child, when he was 18 in a car accident. She's a very strong woman. Dora can reach people and help people through pain. To help people who, I, personally, I don't think there's any pain that you can go through any worse than losing a child. Besides, besides what having one kid that I don't think there's any pain that you can go through any worse than they both are losing. So then losing a child. Yet this woman shines so bright. And she can reach people that I would never ever be able to reach. Because God uses the things that we go through so that we might be a light to someone else. That's how it works. And that's what that's what that is what Paul learned while he was in prison. That's what he was learning. In Philippians and well, I mean all through the prison, but in Philippians that's what he's trying to teach us. That it's not the that take every thought captive. Because it's not what we go through, but how we go through it. It's the attitude we bring because life is 90% attitude and 10% circumstances, as Paul shows in Philippians. He's full of joy. He's full of peace while he's being beaten and imprisoned. He's full of faith. He says, at my very weakest, I am reminded of who lives in me and revitalized. Then he says, and he also wrote Corinthians. As you know, Corinthians is, is the book that's often used in weddings because when we think of love, we think of Corinthians. So, and again, written in prison under the worst cir circumstances imaginable. Second Corinthians, as he was mentioning, uh, he mentioned 12, uh, 9. Power is perfected in weakness. In my worst adversity, God strengthens me. You know, it's, it's like my friend Dora losing her son. In that loss, in her weakness, she pulled closer to Christ and grew and has strength, strength and abilities and gifts to give this world that I don't have because of, because of the gifts that were just developed in her during that weakness. And because Dora used her, her burden for a hit. Christ, to that intimate relationship. You know, I'm, it's the same with many of our lives. I know it's, I know it's, that's the truth for my life. It was in my worst pain. It was when I was most alone and I felt rejected by whether my small little world or whatever it was, or being sick and, you know, be spending all lots of time in a bed alone because of illness. Then I reached up to Christ. And I say this often. I, I, I wouldn't want to think of who I'd be had, had, had he not found me at eight years old. Or had he, I, was it not for him? I, I, I don't even like to, to look at what I believe who I would be if it were not for his mercy and his grace. Okay. Then I thought, oh, God can turn our burdens into a bridges that he used for a purpose. I already said that. And don't mistake, uh, don't mistake a bridge for a burden. See, I'm dyslexic, so I wrote, wrote it backwards. What I meant to say is don't mistake a burden. Oh, no, I did say it right. Don't mistake, I'm from dyslexic. Don't mistake a bridge for a burden. You know, it's like, and I, I mentioned this a while back, it's like Judas. Judas definitely looked like a burden. He was a traitor. He, he was the, was what, what led Christ to, the, you know, by what it looked like, led Christ to the cross. He was instrumental in leading him to the cross. We blame him when we think, when we think about who is responsible regardless of your religion. We think of Judas. Yeah. Judas was, Judas was the bridge that Christ needed to get to the cross. That's why we've got to be careful of what we complain about. And we, get, and, and we, we as Christians, even as non-Christians, if you want a happier life, but as Christians, 
more praising, less complaining. Because sometimes, as I said, to reiterate, what we're calling a burden is <laughs> really a church. Uh, I need a drink, sorry, excuse me. And sometimes, and, and Paul talked about this in 2 Corinthians 12, 7. He talked about sometimes our burdens are to keep us humble, lest we forget who we are or from where we came. You know, people, we, we tend to get pride, and God really can't use us, and we're all prideful and think that it's us. He can't use us. That's why he uses the weak and the lowly. Because he can't use us when we're all puffed up and look at me and look what I've done. Hell no. Look what he, he, through his mercy and grace, is doing to me. Not me doing. Ain't nothing good in me that's any good compared to God. Except for what he puts in me to come out of me. Plain and simple. Oh. Um. God's more interested in developing us spiritually than spoiling us financially. You know, once again, you know, I always get my nose just we I think of this often that, you know, a lot of speakers and preachers, for lack of a better word, they're talking about prosperity, prosperity, God wants to grow your bank account, he wants to give you a car. I say bull. Bull boo. <laughs> God wants to develop an intimate relationship with you. He, he already knows you, but he wants you to get to know him beyond his name. Because even the devil knows his name. Even the demons know the name of God. He wants to get to know each of us intimately, intimately. Because it's only through getting to know him intimately and personally that we can really get to know us. That we can get to know ourselves. And it's only really when we get to know ourselves. First we got to need to get to know him. Then we get to know us. Because it's through loving him that we learn to love us that we can love the world. Because you can't give away what you don't have. Um, oh, and I'm oh, sorry, I don't think. He does not, he's not looking to spoil us financially. You can't take that to, to I don't care if you have a billion dollars. You can't take that billion dollars to heaven. But you know what you can take to heaven? All the good things you did. And not the good things you did for a good name or for, like, for or financial reward or for people say, oh, look, uh, isn't he or she a good person? No, no, no. All that's like hay with his devil can be burned up in the fire. Only that was what was done with a pure heart. Has to be a pure heart. I don't care if you give all your, everything you have away and keep one pair of jeans for yourself and um, I brought that up. <laughs> keep one pair of jeans for yourself and uh, give all your money away and just say, oh, I'm going to trust God from day to day. He's going to get you into heaven, darling. All about the position of the heart. And he alone holds the nation, if not you or I. Not you or I. Mm. And as I was saying, a bridge is designed to form a connection. So, as the, what we consider burdens often, as I said, is really a bridge. And instead of, rather than being to, to, to make something heavy upon us, to weigh us down, to keep us from something, it is to, to help us form that connection. So that, as I said, so we can get from here to here without being hurt. We can, we can go over the rivers. Go over everything that's all the obstacles and get away from the obstacles. That's what a bridge is to get us from A to B, away from the obstacles. Um, okay. and, I put, and a burden is a, a misfortune, a, an affliction, a difficulty. Um, Oh, and when we're rejected by the world is when we can get the biggest dose of God by clinging to him. God comforts us. And in and, and, and that comforting, he does that so that we may that we'll comfort others. He 
because that was supposed to comfort others. And we become the most effective. Those who have been hurt the most in life are the most, in, I'm sorry, those of who have been hurt in life the most can be the most effective for Christ. There is no one that can manage hurting people like someone who's been hurt and survived. I know if I have cancer, and I don't want to bring that to me, but I want to talk to someone who's been through that and survived. Whatever it is, whatever it is. If I'm going through a struggle, if I'm going through something I'm calling a burden or that I see as a burden, I want to talk to someone who's already who turned that burden into a bridge to help me to get over to get to the other side. Have a, the, the least casualties as possible. Um, then Philippians, I thought four four. Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Instead of a pity party, Paul used the burdens to build a bridge, uh, bridge to God. I was very redundant, but you know, I'm not a quick learner, so I need to be redundant. I need to be redundant so that I'm going to get it. So I'm going to learn. I need to hear it over and over. You know, and it's just like it's just like God's word. You know, some people will say to me, "Well, all these years you've been walking with Him, haven't you read that before?" I'm sure, I've read it. But what it means today isn't what it's going to mean tomorrow. How it speaks to me today may not even be how it's going to speak to me this evening. And how it speaks to me isn't how it's going to speak to you. Because this right here, God's word, God's word, it's intimate. It's personal. We may have the same translation, reading the same book at the same time, and get together in our book club. Yet, we're not going to get the same thing out of it. Like anything, you get out of it what you put in it. But we're not going to get the same thing out of it because God's love for us, just like his relationship for us, with us, is intimate and personal. But I ha I'm heading out because I need to go.